Welcome to our Colorado facility located just outside of Denver in Aurora, Colorado. One of five locations across the U.S., it has helped us shave days off our time in transit for our customers. Custom Tool Supply has recently joined the GME Supply and Columbia Safety and Supply family. Custom Tool has spent decades helping contractors in CATV, satellite, and other specialty industries, and joining the GME Supply family have expanded their national footprint. As with our other locations, our Colorado location features a stocked showroom, warehousing facility, with option for curbside or dockside pickup, and will soon have a full training center. The GME Supply family of companies are America's premier outfitters of fall protection, safety equipment, and gear for at height workers. We keep workers safe and productive on the job by offering customers timely service and expertise. Our gear experts are here to be an extension of your safety program, offering solutions and consulting in any way possible to make sure your gear is where you need it, when you need it. One of the best ways we can do that is through our national network of distribution locations and training facilities. Everyone expects to be able to order something online or through a gear expert and get it in just a day or two. And that's what our national footprint allows us to do. Let's take a look at the time in transit for standard ground shipping from our various locations. Beginning with our headquarters centrally located in Columbia, Missouri. We're local to the heart of America. Our second location opened in Atlanta, Georgia in 2015 to service the East Coast and Southeastern U.S. In 2018, our location in the heart of Texas opened in Dallas, further establishing our southern presence. And this year, we've opened a location in Corona, California, where we hosted our last live stream. And just a couple months ago, we welcomed Custom Tool Supply to our family here in Denver, Colorado. As you can see, the majority of the U.S. population is within two-day ground shipping point from one of our locations, meaning you don't have to pay extra to expedite shipments. And look for our quick ship items, which ship the same day as long as the order is placed by 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. Thanks for tuning in today, and enjoy the exclusive training session ahead. All right, hello and welcome to our second stream of this uh, series of YouTube Live exclusive training sessions. We're here live from Aurora, California. I'm Alex Giddings with GME Supply, Columbia Safety and Supply, and Custom Tool Supply, and I'm here with Casey from 3M. Casey, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, Casey with uh, 3M Fall Protection. Been in the industry for about 13 years now. Uh, cover Colorado, Wyoming, and a bit of Montana. Awesome. So today we are talking about ladder safety, uh, ladder safety systems uh, with regard to the OSHA walking working surfaces standard. So let's get into that. So what are walking working surfaces? In November 2016, OSHA published its final rule on walking working surfaces. This rule applies to all general industry workers and went into effect in January 2017. One of the areas impacted was fixed ladders. But to get started, can you just kind of briefly explain what walking working surfaces is and why OSHA released this standard. Um, absolutely. So uh, OSHA was just bringing up to speed. So the walking working surfaces really pertains to general industry. And they were just kind of aligning some of the general industry standards with the construction standards, trying to help companies that operate within both have some, uh, you know, a little bit more even between the two sets of standards. So some of the things they address, fixed ladders, which we're going to talk about today, um, getting body belts no longer allowed for fall arrest, um, bringing up some of the snap hook standards on gate strength to 3,600 pounds, not allowing those weaker gate strengths to be used in fall protection systems anymore, and then addressing slips, trips, and falls and making sure people are taking the right precautions. So just bringing some of the standards up to date and getting things a little bit more cohesive with the construction standards, scaffolding, you know, uh, the, the rope descent systems, things like that. Perfect. All right. So under the new rule, when does a fixed ladder 
actually require a fall protection system? Um, so that was uh, that was one of the the more challenging things to understand because there was um, it, it rolled out in November. So in November of 2018 is kind of a cutoff date. So any new ladder at that point needs to incorporate a fall protection system. And a little bit later, we're going to talk about some of the different types sure. of fall protection systems. But November 2018 is your is your month there. So anything any new fixed ladder over 24 feet in height from that point forward needs to have a fall protection system on it right away. Any of the other ladders, we'll kind of get into some of that in a minute. Okay, perfect. So how does this say apply to outdoor advertising uh, qualified climbers? Yeah, so one of the updates in there really impacted those folks. So um, previous to that standard being updated, a qualified climber was allowed to um, access those taller ladder systems without utilizing fall protection. And so part of this update, even if you're a qualified climber, if that ladder is over 24 feet, and that's from the ground, because you know sometimes those ladders don't start for sure. the first 10 feet to keep people from accessing them. So if that ladder exceeds that 24 feet, foot, um, even a qualified climber needs to utilize a fall protection system of some sort in addition to that certification. Gotcha. And it kind of seems, you know, driving down the interstate that most of those billboards probably exceed that 24 foot. Certainly do. Yeah. Certainly yeah. do. Okay. So you mentioned the date for new ladder installations. Correct. How does that affect the existing ladders? So existing ladders, and once again, this is ladders over that 24 foot in height. Um, mm -hmm. Facilities who have ladders previous to that date of November 2018. So anything um, prior to that, you get 20 years. So you get until November of 2036 um, to get those cages along with you you add a, a ladder safety system and we'll talk about some of the options there but those facilities have 20 years from that date to get those those ladder systems added to there okay perfect and i guess while we're on this topic can you go through some of the industries locations where these ladders might be in place and um, need to be considered certainly so so a lot of your tower climbing folks so people who are accessing different types of towers those ladders are always going to fall subject to this change um, power plants refineries some of those facilities a lot of manufacturing facilities will have ladders you know even just commercial buildings a lot of those facilities have ladders that are over that 24 mm -hmm. foot um, some industries like refining may have hundreds of them while some facilities just have one or two and that's that's why that grace period of that 20 years has been given is just because some facilities have hundreds of ladders yeah. that they're going to need to update with these systems. So a big scope to cover. It certainly is. Cool. So uh, there are several factors to consider when selecting fall protection for fixed ladders. Uh, different structures, applications, frequency of use, different industries may need different solutions. So first off, a pretty basic one, what are the options for fall protection on fixed ladders? The, so there's kind of three areas where people who have brought us in to assist with evaluating it have gone to. So one would be like a, a fixed ladder system. So that's going to be a cable. And if Connor, if you want to pull up um, the picture there of the uh, fixed ladder, just the basic system, we'll start there. Perfect. Um, so that would be one option would just be to put a fixed ladder system and that's going to have a top and bottom bottom bracket and a cable that runs up and down the ladder with a sleeve that travels on it. That's one of the options that you could do. Another option, Connor, if you could bring up the picture with the retractable up at the top of the ladder. So you can hang a retractable up at the top of the ladder and, and we make brackets that allow the end users to do that. And then you can pull an SRL down um, from that to provide the fall protection. And then the other option would be for a worker to utilize a 100% system. So that would be two lanyards or two retractables and just you know connect them as they go up the ladder. Um, that's a relatively slow and tedious process. So uh, not usually common practice. Most people go with option A or B that we covered there. Sure, okay. So going to body harnesses, what types of harnesses are needed for these systems? It's a good question. So that first system that we talked about with the cable going up and down the center of the ladder, that ladder safety system, that sleeve that runs up and down that ladder requires a chest D-ring. So that's a challenge for some facilities because their current harnesses don't offer a chest D-ring, right? Like your tower climbers, they're already going to have the chest D-rings on those harnesses, but a standard industrial environment may not have chest D-rings. So that's something that you need to consider when you're adding that. If that's not something that you want to look at investing in or changing, that second option where you hang the SRL from up above, that system would connect to the worker's dorsal D-ring and almost every harness it comes should, with a yeah. dorsal <laughs> D-ring on it. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's some things to consider as far as different harnesses go. Okay. And 
these harnesses and you know the the fixed ladder system or an SRL, it can work with any brand of harness as long as it has those features. You know, it, it's not it, you don't have to stick with one brand or anything. So if you have uh, a harness from a non 3M company right. and you just want to buy new SRLs, you can do that too. You you would just want to check and make sure that your connections are compatible sure. and that systems are designed to work together. So that would be impact loads and the hooks connecting to D-rings. Uh, most things are, but I would recommend if you're interchanging brands just to check with those manufacturers and make sure the connections are compatible and the systems can be used together. Should be okay though. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so what should organizations consider when selecting a fixed ladder fall protection system? Uh, one of the big challenges that we bring in is one, there's the compliance side is let's get a system on the ladder so that we can be compliant with providing our workers fall protection while accessing that ladder. One of the challenges is getting off of that ladder. Um, mm -hmm. If your system that you utilize only allows the worker to get chest height to the top rung, then they have to disconnect and access that rooftop or maybe they have to step off the uh, platform sideways. Depends on the application, depends on what they need to mm -hmm. do. So we make a series of different top brackets and other manufacturers do as well to allow workers that safe transition leaving the ladder safe system to the area so if you can bring up the picture with a couple of different types of systems perfect so you can see the two off to the right side of the screen there um, are poles that extend up and the first one would allow the worker just a, an overhead anchor point there's a little yellow d ring it's tough to see in that picture mm -hmm. but if the worker had a retractable on their back, they could connect that to that D-ring, transition off the ladder, and have fall protection 100% of the time. The other option extends that lifeline all the way up, and so I can get off the ladder, spin around up on top of the roof, pass through the access gate at a refinery or something like that, mm -hmm. and that would allow me that transition and remain in fall protection 100% of the time. It adds some cost, and that's something that needs to be evaluated, but certainly if you're investing in the equipment, you want to make sure it makes sense for the worker workers to use and you're keeping them safe. Yeah, so it's one of those things when you're looking to upgrade existing ladders or add new ladders, you need to take into account what kind of environment you're working in and assess all of those hazards. Absolutely. There's, it's definitely not a one size fits all um, for mm -hmm. workers for sure. Perfect. Okay. So <clears throat> we kind of touched on Anchorage in that last answer, but um, most people who have experience with fall protection are familiar that an anchor point needs to be rated for 5,000 pounds. Um, it's important to review structural requirements and understand the what the structure is rated for um, when you're evaluating what kind of system to put in. If you can't confirm that the anchorage is 5,000 pounds, you shouldn't use that structure, right? So <clears throat> what are the structural requirements for ladders uh, or for the ladder to utilize the fall arrest or lad safe system. Certainly. So uh, to kind of start at the beginning there to, to understand this. So OSHA says about fall arrest anchors that an anchor must be capable of supporting 5,000 pounds per employee attached, or it can be a part of a complete fall arrest system, which maintains a safety factor of two. And Alex, that confuses people because the 5,000 pound rule is for non-certified structure. So a judgment mm. call is being made on that structure, or you can have a qualified person document it to a safety factor of two. So the anchor that we use, to touch on a few options here, the anchor that we use that holds the SRL at the top of the ladder in the instruction manual, and we always recommend you reference that if you need to get sure. this information, it just explains to the user that that needs to be capable so it can be certified to a safety factor of two, or that one will allow for that judgment call on that non-certified. Now those ladder brackets, they do spread the load between two or three rungs depending on the system. So you want to make sure you look into that in the instruction manual because that judgment call or that certification is going to be based on the rungs that are supporting the load, the structure, and how that ladder is attached to the structure. All those things need to be considered, and it's not always 5,000 pounds. Most of the time, we're going to move to that safety factor of mm -hmm. two. So for a ladder climbing system, those chest systems that go up and down those long structures, those strength requirements for the top bracket and the bottom bracket rungs and the ladder are really going to change based on the number of users. So as you add more users, you have a higher weight capacity that's going to be put on that system. And so you need to considerate that. So if you're looking at investing in, investing in a program in, in a ladder safety system, and you need to have two, three, four users on it at once, you want to make sure you get a system that's capable of that, and then also make sure you understand the structural requirements, because it's not just a, a one-size-fits-all same there. Sure, and so that goes back to, 
check your user manual, of course. check with you know a qualified engineer if you need to, and if you need a little bit more help, reach out to 3M or one of our gear experts, and uh, we can get you in contact with the right folks. Absolutely, and get you answers to your questions and make sure you understand what's in those instruction manuals. Cool. So uh, let's go into installation and inspection. Of course. Um, as these systems may be new to some companies or organizations, it's important to address installation and, and inspection. Uh, OSHA requires a pre-use inspection, and ANSI requires a pre-use and annual inspection, right? So, uh, and that's done by a competent person. Uh, just because the, it was safe the last time you used it doesn't mean it's safe now. There's a number of factors that could damage it or make it unfit to climb on. So, are ladder fall protection systems difficult to install and inspect? Uh, I would say that is going to be case by case. So um, different ladder systems have different attachment points. Um, typically, the more variations of rungs that they can accommodate can create some challenges in the installation. Some of the new systems, the one 3M DBI Sala created, is really nice because it, it covers a wide, range, a wide range of rung shapes, and it's very easy and simple to install. Um, a, what some of the challenges with some systems are how do you attach the top cable system, and then you have to run that cable down to the bottom, attach it, and then tension it. What's the right amount of tension? And some of these concerns are often what drive people to look at investing in having a company come out and do the installation. But some of these newer systems are very easy to install. Um, they've got built-in tensioning systems. If you've got a set of sockets and a torque wrench, um, you can get these systems installed relatively easily. We have some really great literature and information to do some basic training. So if that's something people are interested in, I recommend they reach out to their GME folks and we'll get them the documentation so that before they buy a piece of equipment, they understand what the requirement is going to be on installation. Sure. And then going into inspection, what, what all is involved in that? What do you need to know about the structure, the system, that sort of thing? Of course. So once you get your system installed, um, like we said, OSHA requires a pre-use inspection and then ANSI requires a pre-use inspection and that system to be inspected then annually, at least annually, by a competent person. So pre-use inspection on a basic ladder system, you're going to want to check, one, the structure that you've attached it to, make sure there's no damage to that structure. You want to make sure how that ladder is attached to the structure has not created any major damage or corrosion or the structure in that connection is starting to fail and then you're going to inspect the actual ladder system itself and most of them are pretty basic you've got a bottom bracket so you want to make sure that that bottom bracket hasn't been damaged no corrosion no major deformity in it Retorque the fasteners, make sure those are still at the proper torque, inspect the cable that goes up the system, and then same process at the top bracket, and then some top brackets have some additional things that you need to check as well. But once you've got that system checked for torque and make sure there's no damage to it, you should be good to continue use. Yeah, and I know this is something in the telecom industry that uh, you start seeing a lot more when towers are pretty crowded. There can be some uh, impedances on the cable. So you need to take that into account on your climb and rescue plan too. If Absolutely. you need to transfer to the structure to get by something, an antenna or a mount or something like that, that's something to consider before you're doing your pre-climb inspection too. Absolutely. You're going to want to make sure those workers are equipped with some kind of an additional fall arrest system that they can use to climb around to and, and, and get themselves positioned and then reconnect to that ladder system. Mm -hmm. um, and then most fall protection equipment like harnesses, lanyards, SRLs have some sort of impact indicator that will be shown or be noticeable that the equipment has been involved in a fall. Is that something that is on or should be on uh, safe climb systems for fixed ladders? Um, indeed. So part of that same OSHA regulation that requires a pre-use inspection also includes that if that equipment has been impacted or has been in a fall, that also needs to be removed from service. So um, on the DBI side, the 3M DBI equipment, both the ladder sleeve that climbs, it's got a shock absorber built into it. It's a little laser cut section. And so when you fall and impact that, that area is going to separate and it's going to be a visual indication that that piece of equipment has seen enough force to be considered impacted. And then at the top bracket as well, um, there's a little kind of a gooseneck shape area. And when that gets impacted, it's going to close that gap to a noticeable change so that you can easily see if the shuttle or the system has been impacted in a fall. And, and if it has, it needs to be removed from service and replaced. So it's just like, say, rigging shackles. If they are deformed to a certain extent, then you need to take them out of service and, be, and replace them. Yep. Yeah, and the, that uh, that cable sleeve, I know 
some people see that little laser etching and get a little nervous, but it takes quite a bit of force to actually pop that out, and it's there for a reason. It's to slow you down in the event of a fall and, and also show that it needs to be removed from service. Absolutely. Um, that, that's also a piece of that is to absorb some of the force to give some predictability to those brackets, which allows mm -hmm. us to give you know the people the ratings that those rungs need to hold. When you have that shock absorber in that system, that limits the force to certain amounts, which is why you can put in your instruction manual the, the rung capacities that need to carry because you know what force is going to be put on them. Perfect. Okay. And then let's move on to the last piece in a safety plan, and that's rescue. So OSHA requires that employees provide a fallen worker a prompt and safe rescue or the ability to rescue themselves. Uh, fixed ladder fall protection systems fall under this requirement, obviously. Uh, so what type of rescue systems are available for these fixed ladders? Um, certainly. So w one of the nice things about those ladder systems is if a worker just slips and falls, um, they're going to be arrested off of their chest D-ring. So you're still going to be right in front of that ladder, which makes it very easy to self-rescue. Mm -hmm. Some of the concerns that come with this is what happens if what caused the fall was an injury or the worker is unconscious. Then we need to be able to get them down. And in the event of some of the utility and tower climbers, that can be some pretty um, significant distance. Mm -hmm. So DBI makes a couple of controlled descent devices. The one that gets used frequently is the R550. You can order it with 100, 200, 300, all the way up to around 1,600 feet of rope. And what you would do is a climber would go up or come down from the top, whatever makes sense, connect that device overhead. There's a uh, advantage in the steering wheel so we could lift that worker up, get them off of their fall arrest system, and then use the controlled descent to get them all the way to the ground or get them back up, whichever direction you choose to, to utilize. That's one of the options. Uh, another one that's becoming really popular for those facilities that are going to invest in the ladder anchor that has the SRL up above it, um, DBI makes some SRLs with built-in rescue. So instead of just arresting the fall force, they can automatically go into a rescue. So they'll, they'll arrest the fall force and then immediately rescue that worker to the ground. And so that's a nice option for people who are looking at adding the whole system from they need the anchor point, they need the SRL, and they need to have a rescue plan that checks all those boxes. Perfect. Yeah, and those are kind of difficult to explain just talking talking through them. So I know you have some videos. We've got some videos on our YouTube channel as well. If you want to see the R550 or any of those self-rescue SRLs in action, um, go ahead and take a look at those. Um, did we miss anything? I think we covered the majority of... All right. Getting people at least at least started down the pathway of addressing their ladder safety on those fixed ladders that are over 24 feet right. that are new as of November 2018 and your old stuff you've got till 2036 to get that stuff up to speed. So Perfect. Well, and like I said, a lot of this stuff is uh, pretty technical or there's a lot of dates and numbers involved. So um, you can check out our knowledge base. We have some information about walking, working surfaces. I know 3M does as well. Uh, and if you have any other questions, reach out to any of our uh, GME folks, Columbia Safety folks, Custom Tool folks, or uh, 3M and they can get you set up. Again, thanks for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. And uh, we will see you again, same time, same place tomorrow, where we're talking about RF safety for rooftop workers. Thanks again.